Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. An essential condition to eradicate poverty is to liberate the poor from deprivation. Substantiate this statement with suitable examples. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. Poverty in India is not necessarily characterized by low income levels. Rather deprivation from essential basic services, malnutrition and low human development are also indicators of poverty. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. In India deprivation is mapped through seven indicators like households with a kucha house family without an adult member in working age etc the more the number of parameters on which a household is deprived the worse its extent of poverty number 2 sdg 1 aims to end poverty in all its forms everywhere by 2030 although poverty has declined in india an extremely large proportion of india is trapped in the vicious cycle of deprivation number 3 Poverty encompasses not only material deprivation but also many other forms of deprivations in different aspects of life such as unemployment, ill health, lack of education, vulnerability, powerlessness, social exclusion etc. Number 4. Per capita income levels and poverty vary across India states. This can be attributed to the varying degree of human development across the country. Number 5. Economic growth is not the solution for eradicating poverty this is evident from the fact that despite being one of the fastest growing major economies of the world India houses largest number of poor in the world Number 6 From the perspective of eliminating poverty universal basic services UBS from public sources are needed though not necessarily financed through the budget Number 7 Anti poverty schemes are not often backed by funds or political commitment. Anti poverty programs should comprise of a wide range of programs aimed at generating employment, creating productive assets, providing skills to deprived people and raise the income level of the poor. Number 8. The sector wise approach, SWAP of Netherlands and Pan African Initiative New Partnership for Africa's Development NEPAD aimed at eradicating poverty and generating sustainable economic development are shining examples of successful policy interventions the conclusion of the answer is building human infrastructure through education basic health care and skill development should be the priority of the policy makers In Indian context long term investment in the creating infrastructure and capacity building are the best way to liberate the poor from the process of deprivation. Question number 2. Resorting to ordinances has always raised concern on violation of the spirit of separation of powers doctrine. While noting the rationales justifying the power to promulgate ordinances, analyze whether the decisions of the Supreme Court on the issue have further facilitated resorting to this power. Should the power to promulgate ordinances be repealed? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The Constitution of India vests lawmaking powers in the executive that can be exercised in exceptional circumstances. Under Article 123 of the Constitution President may promulgate an ordinance when parliament is not in session or otherwise when immediate action is required Similarly Article 213 bestows governor with ordinances making powers Moving on to the main body of the answer Number 1 However the ordinance making power of the executive contradicts the fundamental concept of separation of powers between the executive and the legislature Number 2 It undermines the role of parliament as a legislative institution Such ordinances are rarely subjected to deliberations and consultations of parliamentary standing committees It may be argued that the promulgation of ordinances brings uncertainty in the legislative framework in the country Number 3 In a recent judgment the Supreme Court ruled that the power of executive to issue ordinances is not an absolute entrustment and is subjected to satisfaction that such action was necessary. 
In other words, ordinances are not immune from judicial review. Number 4. The court further recognized that the power to make ordinances has been abused to subvert the democratic process. A failure of a legislature to confirm an ordinance was fatal both to the validity of the law and to the rights and liabilities that may have accrued from such a law. Number 5. The ordinance-making power is to be used only to meet the emergent demands of extraordinary situations. Number 6. Ordinances serve their purposes, if used judiciously therefore repealing the power to promulgate ordinance is not an ideal solution. As there are inherent weaknesses in the functioning of Parliament, the productivity of both Houses of Parliament has witnessed declined in the last few years. The conclusion of the answer is, Therefore all parties should work amicably to increase the productivity of Parliament so as to minimize the need of ordinances. Question number 3. Elaborate the impact of National Watershed Project in increasing agricultural production from water-stressed areas. Let's start with the introduction of the answer. The concept of watershed management has evolved to ensure effective use of both natural and social capitals. Thus, the watershed development programs include land, water and human resources as essential components. The main body of the answer is Number 1. The watershed program is primarily a land-based program, which is increasingly being focused on water, with its main objective being to enhance agricultural productivity through increased in-situ moisture conservation and protective irrigation for socio-economic development of rural people. Number 2. India placed 13th among the world's 17 extremely water-stressed countries, according to the Aqueduct Water Risk Atlas released by the World Resources Institute, WRI. Number 3. It has been essential in a country like India where majority of the population depends on agriculture and about 60% of total arable land, 142 million ha, in the country is rainfed. 34. A large portion of the rainfed areas, 65% of arable land in India is characterized by low productivity, high risk and uncertainty, low level of technological change and vulnerability to degradation of natural resources. Number 5. Since water is essential for agricultural production, the provision of adequate water by means of increasing ground water level and conservation of surface water are instrumental. Number 6. With available water harvesting structure farmers are inclined to new cropping pattern and agricultural diversification. The conclusion of the answer is Both agricultural diversification and intensification lead to increase in agricultural productivity in the regions where watershed programs are effective.